owned anything, individually at least. This was the refectory, and, as, and if Emily can point down here, you can see the what used to be or an indicator that there was a wall here at one time. This room that we had just gone through was turned into a hallway into this area, and the hallway went all the way down here, and the entrance was right here. But sometime in the 1950s, this wall was taken down and this iron, iron beam or steel beam was put up to support the, the ceiling. I believe uh, Don Van Sloan um, was actually in on, on, uh, on putting that up. Um, but this was, this was the dining area and this, by the time of the, of the tours, we'll actually have the radiators here. This is actually the heart or the belly of a huge radiator element here that would heat the place with steam, of course. So 1913, you know, this was 1913 technology. Um, but also, when the Franciscan friars were coming from their work at St. Victoria, St. Nicholas, St. Hubert, or elsewhere, when they would come home and they were too late for their communal meal, their meal was waiting for them in this, uh, in this kind of a warming stove. Clever people, clever people back then. Um, also, they would humidify their room by placing pans of water on top of the radiators. So what are our plans here? We're going to be eventually taking out this plywood here and that plywood and providing more window light to come in on this way. This will be, uh, we, this is that we call the new refectory because there is an older one that we'll show you in a little bit. And, and this is where we're probably going to be having some smaller receptions or some gatherings. There's a kitchen here that a great number of, of uh, parishioners remember later on. In fact, actually, um, at least in the 50s uh, and perhaps even in the 40s, there was a parishioner lady who was coming, who came in to to cook meals for them, um, but but she was never allowed into the second floor, which we're going to go to in just a little bit. Let's while we're in the new refectory, uh, let's go out into this walkway. Um, we believe the walkway was originally open, right? And again, you won't have time to bring this up, but this would have been just a, a typical open porchway. You can imagine the friars sitting here and uh, talking to each other and reading. Uh, Father Conran's um, Northern, um, this has a special place in our hearts. Um, this is uh, Father Conran Schneider, uh, a Franciscan friar who still lives in Chasco, a very beloved um, minister here at Guardian Angels, uh, that he caught that up north. And so that'll always have a pride of place. Here's that, the main part of the radiator that I was talking about before where you had that warming, um, warming area in it for food. The entrance to the Friary Garden is right here. And to really be honest, you won't have enough time to really show the people this in your tours. Uh, the tours will be around 30 to 40 minutes. But I would just let them let them kind of get a gander of it so that at some point in the future, if they would like to come and either help garden or just come and pray and meditate, uh, it's fine with us. This is, the, this is an undiscovered jewel uh, in Chaska, in Carver County. And we have plans to continue to um, uh, enhance the beauty of it and eventually uh, doing some renovation work back here. Let me show you this view. The, unfortunately, the sun is at the really bad time to be able to see this, but um, if, you, if you look up here, I, I encourage you to bring your people at least out to this point here and have them look back at this church. And I'm going to ask Emily just temporarily to come into the sun so that you can kind of see, see how really potentially incredibly beautiful this place is. You just, you just don't see this anymore in America, in because uh, most of these buildings have been torn down. Let's go back inside. What did the friars grow back here? Well, the friars were um, self-reliant, and 
they would grow their vegetables and their fruit and flowers there. It was also a place for meditation uh, and it was also a place where they could go and not be disturbed by people around town. Uh, there were there was um, there were walls completely around the place and uh, uh, in fact actually there were wooden slats that made it even higher so they have perfect uh, privacy. I just want to point out one thing. Uh, this is what I love about this place. Uh, this is the automatic door closing <laughs> device. It's just a, basically a big weight with, with rope. The Franciscans were very, very, very practical people that, that took their vow of poverty very seriously. Uh, and so they used inexpensive means. Unfortunately, the inexpensive approaches that they would take to repairs are sort of kind of like coming back to haunt us. The tuck pointing that, the tuck pointing is the mortar between the bricks. Um, much of it's coming out and, and when it had been coming out before, they would put cement in there. Ugh. The worst thing that you can do. It's destroy, it's really destroying the exterior of the fiery and also the church and also the walls, the walls. Let's go downstairs. Let me stop here for a second though. When I take people on tours and I have them come down here, uh, I let them know that probably this will be one of the few times that they'll be able to go downstairs because we'll never, when this becomes, when this building is eventually reused, we really won't be able to bring people down here because it's not up to code. Uh, and, and to bring it up to code, we'd have to put a lot of money into it in terms of new entrances and so forth. So this is going to be one of the few times that the public will be allowed to go down here. When you're helping people down here, please help them come down here. Uh, I always stand at the bottom of the steps. Um, I always ask people to hold on to this railing when they go down and go down very slowly and watch where their feet are going, you know, actually placing them down firmly. And then I stand here and I'll show you where I stand. Right here. So that when they're coming, I actually go like this and I offer my hand to them. Now, guys usually don't like to do that. And so what I do is I just place my arm like that and I, and I show and I, and I tell each and every one of them, please watch your step, please watch your step, please watch your step. Now we're in, in the lower level of, of, of the friary. Now we think of the lower level as the basement and it's like the throwaway floor. It's like where you, where you don't really think about it. It's kind of like where you throw your stuff uh, down there and most people's basements are filled with junk, right? Not true in Europe. And this is, remember, Europe transplanted into America. The Germans that came over here were very consciously trying to recreate Germany, or Germany didn't exist as a unified country at this time. Uh, they thought of it as a region, which is Germania, Germania. We know Germany today is called Deutschland, right? Um, but Germania included all sorts of countries uh, and states and, and provinces that spoke German, the German language. Um,